vehicle. I'm picking the truck up. We just done a complete walkthrough, looked at all the compartments. Everything looks great. I'm going to uh, get it fired up and get on the road. It, it's everything I expected it to be. I'm really excited about this, I don't know if you can tell. This is, this is a big step up for my company, it really is. Got the wheel grids that I want, it'll, uh, it'll last me for the rest of my life. No, it's a... Uh, and go get her loaded up. It's a nice clean truck. I'll do a little lettering on it and some decaling, I'll look it good. Okay. Out here. He's gonna, I'm gonna follow him over to a gas station so I get fueled up and I'll be heading out. It's a little later than I was hoping for, but we're still gonna try and get 12 hours in today. It's the inside of the truck, it looks nice. Well, I'm just a few blocks away from where I bought the truck. And I'm going to fuel up here. It's got a Corbett tank. I'm going to top the fuel off. I'll write the mileage down. Not sure what we're paying for a gallon. It doesn't. Oh, we're paying $3.79 a gallon for fuel. So I got to get on this road out here, drive approximately five miles, then I'll be on, I think he said it was uh, I-85, and I'll be on that for two hours into uh, my next stop. Just fueled up. I'm just heading out of, I think it's Englewood, California. I got about four more miles to go before I hit the freeway north. We'll see what my mileage is on my next fuel up. Losers right there. We're gonna whip their asses next weekend, right? Legs. I'm going 70 miles an hour at about 2,200 RPM. So it's cruising real nice at, at 68, it's cruising real nice at 68. 28 miles to Wyoming and there's just a whole, but a, a whole bunch of nothing out here. I don't, I don't see farms or nothing. It's just cell phone towers, a lot of cell phone towers. Like there's a cell phone tower about every five or 10 miles. But that's about it. We're cruising along right at about 70 miles an hour. I think the speed limit to here is 75. Crossed into Wyoming, and I believe a mile or two up here, I'll have a point of entry, and I'm supposed to pull in there, and I may have to buy a trip permit to cross Wyoming. That's what they told me, so that would be our next stop, would be the way station. Port of entry into Wyoming. I, uh, was told by a gallon of phone today that I'm going to have to, because of the weight of the truck, I'm going to have to get possibly a trip permit, but I can purchase it here. I tried to do, do it online a couple of days ago, but I could never get through to anybody in Wyoming, so we'll just take care of it now. Greg, he stopped. We've been talking tow trucks at the uh, Wyoming turnout. I'll put you on YouTube too. Oh, thank you. yeah, <laughs> he he drives with camel towing down here. You take care, man. Be safe, buddy. Bye-bye. I tell you what, uh, he was pretty impressed with this truck. He was he wanted to know all about it. So we walked over the truck and opened the compartments up and looked at things. So I, I think I'm a little more excited than him, but he was pretty excited about the truck too. Wyoming will be on this road for 289 miles and that's where we'll take our next turn so we got about six hours of driving one thing that's nice it looks like the speed limits are all 70 and 75 miles an hour so we're making pretty good time so I'll have freeway for the next six hours anyway I found a western 
racing, so I'm a truck driver. I always remember a guy came to my shop one time by a truck truck, and he wasn't happy until he got the radio station on country western, so he could go trucking. They found some country music. They go. You know what they say, you can't be a truck driver unless you got country music on. We're about well, 100 miles into wilding out. Nothing but trucks and loads. Fifty miles to uh, my next turn on that is Bronx Springs, I think. One or twenty miles, I'm just a little bit below half a tank. I'm gonna go ahead and fill up here at this little gas stop. Just want to kind of get an idea of what kind of buys I'm getting. I've been bucking up about a fifty mile an hour headwind and pushing seventy miles an hour. So I'll top it off here. I've still got another one hundred and fifty miles before I get to Rock Springs. Not sure how many places there are to fill up between there and here, so I figured I just better top off. Oh, nine cents a gallon? I don't think so. I'll go on down the road a ways. I'm not gonna pay that kind of money for fuel off the building nowhere. There's gotta be there's gotta be something better to get fuel than that. Miles to Rock Spring. I just topped off with fuel, it took 35.7 gallons. I travel a little over 240 miles. I'm not sure exactly what that's going to come to in mileage, but I travel just, I think, right at 240 miles so far. We're going to go pay for the fuel and get out of here. Okay, we're still working. Rock Springs, about an hour and a half before it's sunset. The last hour I've been driving into the sun. Uh, yeah, I think it's just another 15 miles to Rock Springs and about. 30 miles past that is where I take my cutoff and start going north through Wyoming headed towards the uh, Idaho border. I'm going to fuel up one more time before I take that cutoff. That way I'll have a full tank. I hope to run about seven or eight more hours tonight and get myself at least to the Idaho border so when I take off in the morning I'll uh, only have about 12 hours left to drive. So I'll run tonight till about midnight and I'll get a motel room. Four hours to Boise, Idaho. It's about seven o'clock at night. I'm another Flying Eagle. I'm gonna fill up one more time here, and that should get me up past Boise and maybe into Oregon, and then I'll top off there. I stopped with the carburetor in front of the radiator. It's running so cold, I can't get a heat inside the cab. Uh, it started. Oops. Hopefully that'll get me some heat back inside the cab. It's freezing out here. It's probably about around 15 degrees, and uh, it it just not able to not able to cool itself off. The engine's running so cold that uh, my temperature gauge doesn't even show any temperature at all. And I know I got water in it, so oil pressure good. Everything else is good. I'm just hoping I can get some heat up here now and get some heat back inside the cab. Yeah, I'm running, still running, right at 100 degrees. So, hoping things will pick up here. I mean, I'm gonna let it idle here for a little bit and see if I can see if I can get some heat going here before I take off. It is way too cold. That Flying J was uh, at 478 miles. So, I'll tie that in with a mileage that I got. We'll see where it came up. Didn't do very good on this one, pushing that wind. Light enough to see all this. I just am pulling into Pendleton. And the less traveled fast lane is covered with cross. The 
Lane I'm in looks fairly dry, but I'm not going to take a lot of chances. I dropped my speed down quite a bit. I'm going to fuel up here and fuel up here in Boise, and then we'll next stop will probably be somewhere around Pendleton for a fuel. Got a little over four of a tank of fuel left. I'm just going to top it off. That'll get us past Pendleton, I'm sure. I've traveled 814 miles and I got about another 500 to go. Going down Cabbage Hill right now, following a semi, it is a sheet of ice. Uh, you touch the brakes, you just, it's not real bad, they lock up a little bit. The semi behind me, he finally pulled over. Uh, I don't think he could keep himself held back behind this guy. So I'm just gonna, it's six miles down. I think I'm just going to fall him down the bottom of the grade. I'll let everybody else fly through here. Well, I didn't realize it was so far between gas stations. I'm not sure where my next fuel stop is. Down to an eighth of a tank, and I think the next place to get fuel is about 30 miles away. So I'm hoping that little bit of fuel in my tank will get me 30 miles. I have no idea how many gallons that is. It's just getting daybreak. I'm uh, I've traveled 1,195 miles so far since 11 o'clock yesterday, and it is uh, right at 7 a.m. Just coming in. I think I'm about 100 and I think around 100 miles to Portland right now on Highway 84 West. I just passed the Hood River about 20 miles back, and I'm hoping, I think it's Trout, yes, Troutdale's next 18 miles. I should have enough fuel to get 18 miles. I'll be fine there. Pretty sure there's a truck stop there at Troutdale. So a little bit nervous there for a few minutes, but 19 miles, I should be able to cover that with no problem. I got a truck stop at the next exit. I've been sweating in here. It's been about 18 miles and there has been no exits or anything. I'm thinking I've got one coming up here, but I, I this thing's been bouncing. It started bouncing here a little bit ago. Now, there's a flying A across the street. So all I got to do is figure out how, well, well, shoot, I just missed my exit. Oh, got it. They're doing construction right there. Hope there's another exit down here a little ways further. I did not want to do that. That could be ugly. Uh, I better get off the phone or off the video here. That's messing me up. That's cut her a little close. I just made it. I hope this place is open. Uh. Let's see if we got diesel here. the exit where I just was at. I hope I have enough fuel. I am out. I can't believe I did that. What a bonehead stunt. I just hope I have enough to get back on the freeway and make it down two miles. I was so freaked out about getting run out of fuel. I lost my other GoPro cam. I don't know where I put it. I'm at uh, 1,215 miles. I just filled up and it took uh, it took 48.5 gallons. So I had probably maybe a gallon and a half of fuel left in my truck, or maybe a gallon. So I was cutting her awful close. Oh, back to the beach.
just 30 minutes from home, just across the Neastoria Megler Bridge, and we're home. It's taken me exactly, start to finish, 11 hours to travel 1,300 and, let's see, 30, 50 miles. So that'd be 1,350 miles in 24 hours. To town. I just pulled into town just in time to have breakfast for to cut it off. Uh, took me 23 hours and 30 minutes to make it. 23 hours and 30 minutes.